everyone, welcome back to the Circle Game series. My name is John and I'm a software engineer here at Clockwork Labs. In today's video, we're going to highlight the next three streams where we worked on the Circle Game. For the first day, we're going to work on the screen that gets shown when the player is eaten. This will allow the player to respawn and get back in the game. We'll also work on the module side logic for respawning. Let's jump into it. We can um, add in a respawn button here and uh, we'll probably add some stats later. We're probably not gonna do the stats right now, um, but we'll add a respawn button here. Game over. You were eaten. You have been eaten. Um, so then we've changed to create player a little bit. Um, we're going to have to maybe update this a little bit because we've removed circle ID and all we have is entity ID now. Delete by entity ID. And we'll just delete by entity ID. Okay, so then inside of... Instead of create player now, we pick a random position. We have like the world size. We grab an X and Y. We generate within that X and Y minus the player start mass, um, which this needs to be updated actually. Although it doesn't really matter as much because you'll just immediately get snapped back in. Um, Sorry, why does it have to be updated? Oh, because wait. Mass no is wise. no longer the same thing as radius. So like if this was actually correct, it would be like player start radius is equal oh, right. to mass to radius start yeah we should do that yeah so if we're calling despawn on this we have an identity we're gonna have to do var player is equal to player dot filter by player id identity i don't know if it's best practice or not but like what if we had an extension method on circle where you could look a circle up by like an identity and that would just grab the player and then grab the identity like maybe that's best practice i don't know but so i keep having what? to do this like filter by player id and then say identity dot value and then if player is equal to null we're going to return and then okay the thing that we actually want here is the circle we're going to actually the thing we actually want is the identity or the entity so we can actually just do this this is this is fine that specifically is fine it's not any longer than it was before yeah will like really what you would want to do is what would that look like inside a c-sharp module because the api should be the same uh, whether you're in a C sharp module or you're on a client querying the mo the sort of module the client database, if that makes sense, and can we make that better? So I think we can definitely improve this sort of paradigm, both in the modules and on the clients, uh, and hopefully make it a little bit more straightforward. So if player identity has value and player dot identity dot value is oh no the whole reason I came in here was to make a function okay I have to write this function quickly so all I want to say is public bool is local player and this will just return um, return local identity is equal or I guess um, identity dot has value and identity dot value is equal to local identity that's all. I wanted this to be, and we can simplify a little bit. Well, this is this is objectively faster because you're doing less broadcasting. Let's say you had like 2,000 players in a game. This is objectively better. True. Well, the idea here, I guess, is like, what is it doing? It's like, okay, some circle was updated. Go look up that, go look up the course. So some circle in my database was updated. Go look up the corresponding Unity game object and change its position. Yeah. So you're just going to be doing that for all the different things. So now I'm back in. I respond. Are you still on, Tyler? I am, yes. I'm still here. Uh, meet me at the bottom of the map, maybe? Oh, I'm not physically in the game, but I am still present in the stream. So let me replay. Okay. Um, I'm back. Oh, and I'm the same size. Yes, that should be correct. That checks out. Okay. We could decay players who are offline. 
that's actually really cool though that i still have my player after logging in we could even restart the server and i would still have my player yeah <laughs> okay let's see where you are you're in the bottom left uh generally at the bottom i don't think i could go to the i left. can see i'm looking at the um oh, okay oh you're cheating right i'm cheating where'd you go there you are yep, you have I got been respawn okay very cool seems to have worked that's fun look at that yes now we have a game loop this is this is legitimately uh what i would consider a game loop right i would consider it as well okay come here oh oh did you, you freeze i froze yeah <laughs> all right r.i.p game loop okay what happened i wonder <laughs> oh no we froze oh but we then we... oh because we still have the error Whatever it is, but it's oh, still... Oh, it's one me and you are touching. It's going to freeze if we're touching. Oh, no. Now we're, like, overlapping forever. Correct. But, well, until we decay. So, yeah, you, so decay. What's, happening, what's happening is we still have the error where we, you're missing. And we're still returning from that function. I think we just want to say continue. We don't want to throw the error and leave the function. We just want to say, oh, if you can't find the entity, just keep going. Like, skip yes. this circle. Yes. Yeah, so this will work. Fine. Uh, let's see. Do I publish? Okay. All right. One more time. One more time. Do you want to meet me? Uh, meet me in the bottom left-hand corner. Sure. Oh, there we go. And that was the end of that stream. For the next stream, we wanted to work on a cool outline shader, which would make players and food look more stylized. We spent basically the whole stream working on it, but we got the effect we were looking for. Let's check it out. So we got back into the game exactly where I guess we left off here. Um, so one thing I wanted to improve was like the outside of the circle. I think, um, like Agario has like kind of this cool shader where like the inside of the circle is kind of like a light color. And then the outside of the circle is like a slightly darker color. And like the edge is kind of like wavy. Um, I kind of wanted to do some shader improvements, although I haven't done like shaders in a long time. It's going to be unlit. It must be this. So this will be circle shader for the comparison then i think we can actually compute radius like i had said um but i'm gonna like bring it in for now like the radius of the circle and we can just use 0 0.5 0 0.5 here i i believe um i have to like change this i think so that this is like out float three out like this and then instead of returning here i think we have to say out is equal to that and then this has to return void in order to actually use it in the editor like that yeah that works so we're actually going to reduce the value i'm going to like subtract i guess i'll mold subtract yeah, I'll subtract like 0.1. Um, oh yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool. It like has like um, when I'm like zoomed in really far, it has like almost like um shadows. It's like a shadow. Oh, like, kind of. Um, it's just because of how this it's a screen space shader. Um, although why is it an oval? Because it's like. Is it because of oh, this? Oh, I see. Oh, look. Oh, that's so jank. Okay. Um. So basically what we want to do is we have the world position mm -hmm. and what we want to do is we want to also take the so we're inside of the fragment shader so it's like we need the position i think this is like straight up you just do create node position and then length 
Like, I want the length of this. Is this the correct thing? Hopefully it is, right? Oh, so if this thing is... Okay, cool. Um, so that's very close, actually, to what we want. We just want this comparison as a branch. Let me just try this first. A branch predicate. If it's true, it's one. Otherwise, false, it's zero. Oh, wait, sorry. We want radius minus border size, right? Is that what you're saying? Correct. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we, uh, want, yeah, we want... You're right, you're right, you're right. Radius minus border size. Okay, so I just suck at math. I wouldn't say that, but uh, <laughs> it is a little bit different to think in terms of the graphs here. And you don't need that subtract, you just do that. There we go. That's making my brain feel better. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's play with numbers that I guess make sense now again. So radius, if we just bring this back to our point three. There we go, baby. Okay, all right. So for the darkness, RGB, this guy. So this is going to be um, border VSAT. There's a DVAL, HSV, a DVAL. Let me just jump in one more time, make sure that that's okay. Very cool. And after that, we wrapped up that stream. And now we're on to the next stream. Uh, for the next stream, we worked on polishing the outline shader, and we finally jumped back into the module code where we're going to work on the logic for player splitting. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, um, this is like quite simple. Um, common practice is just add some noise in here. We'll just start with like, um, I think it's like um, Perlin or something. Gradient noise? Yes, I guess Perlin noise would be gradient noise. Um, basically what we want to do is, um, we're changing the position, the input position just slightly so that the edges are going to be kind of, um, be wavy, be wavy. Um, and this is like probably the best way to do it in my experience. Um, okay. this value we'll probably want to play with. So like, there's like a waviness here. So if I go like waviness, and you said this was best practice, whoops. Um, yeah, this is like typically how you would do this. There's going to need to be a time component to this at some point. Okay, hold on. That was way too wavy. Yes, you're right. You are correct. Um, all right, so we have to have the waviness really small. Otherwise, we like... True, although that is that is what we want. That is kind of a nice effect. It, it is what we want. Uh, so but we have to make this like, yeah, point maybe like 0.02. Or 0 0.01. I'd say 0 0.01, yeah. Yeah, 0 0.01. Even, okay, even so maybe then... less than 0 0.01. We want subtle. Yeah, 0 0.005. And then you're totally correct. We want to add a time component to this, which is actually very easy as well. Um, we're just going to go into here and we're going to add a new thing called time. So, you, sorry, uh, repeat the thing you're saying. You want two gradient noises moving opposite to each other? Moving um, perpendicular to each other. Two gradient, okay. Um, because what you're going to get if you do that, I mean, you can try this first, but what you're going to get is you're going to get a, mo a wave clearly moving yes, over. Yes, exactly, yeah. Okay, how does that look, Tyler? The frame rate's gonna be kind of bad because of the um, the scene editor, but. It seems like we're only jiggling for some reason in the top right and the bottom left, but yeah, not like in this the top left and the bottom jiggly. right. And the question would be why? You're doing, it should be XZ, right? You're using XZ, not XY. Mm, that's a great point. No, it's it should still be XY. Okay, that, that is right, and I think this will look better. Yes, it does. 
Beautiful. Can't now we're connected okay. to the correct wow. thing. Okay. Now we're cooking. Let's take a look at our... Um, is it jiggling? It's very it's very uh, minor, but yes, it is jiggling. Maybe if I get bigger, it'll be more obvious. Uh, it shouldn't. It should be the same... Same size. It's like slightly more obvious when I get bigger. Oh, you're right. I mean, that looks pretty close. Okay, um, so I've resumed. I'm going to hit spacebar. Ah, it animated. Okay, so we've got one blue one, one purple one. You should always get the same color. Uh, oh, I see. Oh, very cool. So it did work. So you can split again, maybe? Uh, yeah, and now I'm back to like moving really fast. All right, so let's fix that. So when we're checking circle IDs here, we shouldn't be checking circle IDs. We should be checking player IDs. So this should be if other circle dot player ID is equal to circle dot player ID. Not check to make sure check to see if we're overlapping with another circle circle owned by another player. Yeah, the sum of it. We did. Yeah, that's right. But what I'm saying is, um, I would like to eat a thing if it is, if half of it is with inside of me. <laughs> I don't know how else to say that. <laughs> and, I, and I think max is what we want. Entity radius, entity one radius dot max, entity two radius. This is the part where you say, oh. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> okay. There are two circles owned by me. There are two bobbies. Okay, so now now go approach it approach it real quick. Uh, sorry, really slow like. Yeah, so it's like the second half of it. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you'd like to see us live, you can check us out at twitch.tv slash baseNDB. We're live every Wednesday and Friday. All the source code for the Circle Game project is actually available on GitHub. If you'd like to check it out, the link is in the video description below. And with that, we'll see you in the next one.